pedal train track and normal Okay, so we got a new piece of paper. We've got a motor. We have a marker. I'm gonna go through this, get the measurements. I'll chime back in when I get them all done because it takes me a little while. I'm not very good at it. They will be accurate, probably. Okay, guys, I'm digging in here pretty deep, trying to figure out what's going on. I just took off the bolt that holds on the bevel gear off the crank, and there's a crack right through the gear. So I'm gonna get that off, and I actually, I, I would like to show it to you. Never had one do that before. I don't really how to show you, but it's all the way through right there and right there. And it's right down this whole thing, but. All right guys, not sure if you can actually even see what I'm doing here, but if not, no big deal. I really turned you on so I could talk to you. Yesterday when I was, you know, about to take it off the bike, I test drove it one more time just to see what exactly it was doing to get my head wrapped around it, make sure everything's okay. And I noticed it didn't really do it when it was, engine wasn't warm. It did it a little, but not like when it warms up. So right there, that tells me something's letting go. It was just very hard to tell, you know, where it was coming from. But, you know, I had my, my inklings that it was the bottom end. But then I started thinking it might be the clutch. And it, it's tore up, <laughs> to say the least. The clutch basket, there's bearings inside. And if you spread it and get the gap like down in here, there is definitely maybe missing bat bearings. Uh, the gap is big enough definitely that a couple could squeak out with uh, the play and when it heats up especially. Bearings are super small and the gap is quite large. It's also very hard to turn. I bet we'll have a lot more power too with this thing once I put it. Just that alone, you can hear it's dry. It's, it's tore up from the flow up, basically. So uh, I think I need a new basket. But when I was trying to take it apart because I was about to split the case, I couldn't get the freaking thing off. First of all, the, the magnet keyway, there's play in it. I never did the uh, timing mod to get more timing out of it. The keyway just has play in it. The keyway on the main drive sprocket on the left side has a lot of play with it, and that's this side. It also wouldn't, I couldn't get this out. This bearing would not come out. I got it out once I got it off the, out of the motor. It's all just frozen on there. I just spent a little bit of time just now uh, sanding down the actual shaft. There was play in that, and, and it was definitely ovaling it out a little bit. There was, there's play in the main uh, keyway on the crankshaft on the right side. There's play in everything related to the drive. I'm assuming that is where the vibration and noise is coming from because if you hold the crank steady, there's no up and down play. Now there's a little side to side like everyone has, but we're good. We're super good. I'm 100% confident the motor is good. The bearings for the motor, smooth, butter, no play, no side to side play, no up and down. It's good. So I'm happy with that. I'm very happy with that. I'm going to continue to play with this, sanding it down and fixing it, and then we'll take it completely apart, grease it up, get everything back to uh, square one, and start with a perfectly clean setup. And I have more than enough, you know, clutches and baskets literally just laying around not doing anything. So we'll get one on here, and we'll get it all squared away. I'm sure of that. For reference, so you guys know what we're dealing with also, I did the port timings. Exhaust open at 87. The duration is 174. Transfers open at 118. The duration is 124. Blowdown of 31. Now, I would like to get the blowdown down, but uh, there's nothing I could do to make that because I can't. Only way I'd be able to do it is if I actually raise the transfers up because I did so much custom work to the cylinder and I'm not gonna go in there and dig it up. I like the way the motor works. It's great little puller. Like it really has some torque on it for this little tiny thing. So I'm, I'm just gonna leave together. it as is. I forgot to video that because I'm a horrible YouTuber on the worst motorized bike channel in the world. And I put a whole new basket in and just cleaned everything up and re-greased it. And we're good to go. So it's going together like normal. Okay guys, what is going on today? So. I am taking off the motor for testing for the porting and all that. I will get that 
on my test mule. I got a bike for testing now. And I'm putting on that. Because my YD, I'm going through it again because like I, I showed you in the last video, I don't know what's going on with the, uh, with the metal getting in there. I have no freaking clue. So I don't want to rush it. I really like that motor. Just it's simple, but I just don't want to rush it and ruin it for no reason, you know, just to get a motor on a bike and run it. So I got this one. I want to put this on here because it's got more power. I get the test mule off because I got to figure out what's going on with the carburetor. The carburetor is horrible on here. This is just one of those cheap carburetors. It is always leaking. Look at the oil the fuel down there. So I'm going to get this off of here, put another carburetor on. I got plenty of them. And I'm going to put that motor on here. And I think I might even put this on. Yesterday I was able to take a file to this, you see. I See how it's like not getting it there and not getting it up here? Well, the whole thing was like that. So I had to file all the way down because it leaked horribly. It does have a broken weld over here, which I don't have a welder. But that's not that bad. I could deal with that. I can't deal with the, the gasket never sealing. So let's get this off of here. And we'll put it on there in a little bit, but we're going to put the red and black one on here. And uh, special enough with the red and black one, I know you guys are interested, but with the red and black one, I actually changed, I measured all the timing, <laughs> stupid enough, I didn't measure the timing after I changed the um, piston. I, um, the the blowdown was 31 degrees, and I wanted a little bit less blowdown. I like more torque because of where I ride, so I wanted a little bit torquier motor. So what I did is I ramped the piston about a millimeter, half a millimeter to a millimeter on the actual piston into the transfers to get the blowdown percentage less. I wanted to, you know, I wanted to be able to get that going. Uh, so all the better, right? Right. Okay, I, uh, I got the motor on, obviously. Priming the carburetor, see what happens. Oh, there we go. Okay pedal pop the clutch let's see what happens i'm gonna put you guys on my other mount so I this motor had that issue with that crazy noise i thought it was a bottom end problem or maybe a top end i don't know i thought it was the end I thought it was a problem somewhere but it doesn't seem to be looks like it turns out like it looks like it was just a maybe a clutch issue all right let's see if it works let's give her hell Definitely the clutch. And she's got a little more pep in her step. nice 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 whoa that is loose let's tighten that up huh that's real loose good thing we stopped well how did it get so loose i guess yeah, that's way better mucho better row it's a good time to do the exhaust is right after you got done riding
I'm a stromper on. But when it hits, you hear that higher pitch right there. It really starts to pick up. Much better, bro. All right, guys, we are going out for a ride, Heather and I. I'll be turning you on and off periodically. She is on the test mule, and I got the porting motor on there that we're going to do all the work to is to show the different levels of success you can have with just some simple do-it-yourself mods. This is the first time she's riding this one and hopefully we'll get some runs in with the actual time and how long it takes to you know go from point a to point b the speeds and stuff with her body weight because she's more realistic like an average person's body weight so all right let's get going which way where you want to go you think Just, all right let's go up to that road first i'm gonna go around this way to warm them up My thing keeps moving, man. I think my clutch is backing out. I gotta have to fix that. Like how far this arm is in now, like it's not right. Okay, spot one, no good. Plan B, let's go plan B. This was plan A, but we didn't know it, so we're gonna try plan B. You know where it'd be a really good spot? Over by, let's go over there. That road, we'll just take the sidewalk all the way down. We'll go over, like in between Agape, like on the way to the laundromat. There's that uh, old abandoned warehouse that's got that huge parking lot. It's all paved, it's overgrown, but it's all paved. That's perfect. I used to want to shoot videos over there because it was so cool. Let's hope the bike makes it. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with the plug. But it is not happy. It's already loose again. Yeah, that nut's got to be backing out. Okay guys, I came back from my ride real quick because the clutch, I had to tighten it up here, arm was all the way over here, and it wasn't like that when I built it or finished building it the other day. There is some metal. I took the bucking bar out already, but this is loose. This, also loose. I don't know. I don't feel too great about this right now. But I'm glad I didn't push on and keep riding. I don't have a 
proper recording gear because I wasn't planning on doing any of this. I was planning on just going out for a nice ride with Heather. See it anywhere guys. Definitely hit this and then vanish. I don't think I'm gonna reuse it, but I do want to see it. I want to see what kind of mess I'm working with here. Man, I'm aggravated about this right now. I just want to go out for a ride. And yes, granted this was the testing session for this motor. Sometimes you just want things to be perfect and not have to go back and do it again. Oh, I found it. Man, it was really jamming up in there. Look at the play on this thing. I had that nut tight. Even more alarming. The inside here. Look at how that got tore away. I mean, this is a torquey little beast, but my gosh. So the chain started to hit in there. It was definitely rattling here. How this came loose, I don't know. I'm about to put thread locker on there. I never did that before, but apparently this one was loose when I took it out. And this is a whole new uh, clutch assembly. You know, the shaft is the stock shaft. The basket is new. I'm gonna put a new uh, shaft in. I am into my clutch again. I just put it all together yesterday. Uh, and today was technically the first run. I definitely have a little bit of marring right there. Not a huge deal to me. I can adjust that by just smashing these in a little. So you see all that dust from that. You can now see the keyway. Can you see how it is completely screwed up there? Yeah, that's not good. The sprocket is still good and the hole is okay, but the nut was loose and i only rode this five miles since i put it together yesterday uh, that was just to make sure it started up and ran and everything and it seemed to be okay yesterday the clutch did come a little loose on me i just thought it was adjusting like breaking in a little bit and it wasn't bad so that's why i didn't really pay it no mind i just adjusted the cable and kept it moving and today on the ride literally within a couple minutes uh, i had to adjust the cable again definitely thought it was weird started to take notice and within a minute or less later I had to do it again, which I didn't do. I just came right home to rip the clutch apart. On a plus note, the bearings are glassy. The shaft is the original shaft to this motor. The bearings are the original bearings. Spring, all that is original to this motor, the Sutec. The basket was what I was having problems with, and I put a new clutch basket on from one of my YD100s, and we're having clutch issues again. The reasons I took this apart in the first place was the clutch issues. The basket's good, but it seems the shaft is a problem. So I'm gonna take this apart and we're gonna put a new shaft in here and just be done with it. I started sanding this side, not a lot. 220 grit just to get the rust off, clean it up. This is the new uh, parts I'm putting in. That's the old shaft bearing I'm using. Other miscellaneous parts that gotta go on, but we're getting there. Damage was pretty good, but nothing that we can't fix. All right, guys. So uh, I got this together. I cleaned up the shafts. See the amount of thread I got in there? It's hard to see. It's in the sun right now, so I can't tell if you see it good, but I think so. It's about two to three threads. But this doesn't work on every clutch shaft. This is a YD100 and like the PK80s, the standard 80s. The Sutec one I noticed one thread, half a thread to one thread from the bearing was more than enough to put the tension you need. But for the YD100s, I find for my body weight and the power I try to run, it needs to be at least two and a half to three threads from this side of the bearing that you can see exposed here. Together, I am putting a little bit of red thread locker on here. Not a lot, but a dab. Um, I don't recommend that for everybody. However, I have been having nothing but issues with this backing off, and it is removable. I don't want to use the blue because that's really removable. The red's much harder but totally doable, so I want to put it on there, uh, keep it from backing off. It's not like every day I'm, I need to get into this clutch or something, and as it's been lately, it's been every day I had to get into this clutch because it keeps coming apart, so I want to make sure it's not coming apart anymore. Okay guys, take two. 
clutch is repaired and we are going. If not, I'm riding off a cliff. This is where I think we're gonna do it right here. Nice long run up to do our straight line runs to see what kind of speed it gets in a short amount of time. I want her to start at like 10, 15 miles an hour and then punch it, um, you know, there about so we get a good RPMs. Uh, she's gonna do the test note because she's lighter than me and more realistic to what a regular person weighs. But we just raced a little bit on the way here and with the new carburetor, I know it looks like the same car, but it is a different car. Mm -hmm. It is night and day difference. She could not keep up with me. Well, she kind of kept up with me. I slowly pulled on her. She was ducked down in cruising position for maximum uh, windage. I was sitting straight up, but I had more power. So the 80cc that I did definitely makes a whole lot more power because this would have never, ever done that before. But that just shows if she was on this though, she would have flew away like I was standing still. So once we get the power out of that one, because that's a 40 millimeter stroke. So it's a little longer stroke than this one, two millimeter. But that all adds up in the end and gives you more power because you can get more numbers out of it. So we're going to have a real good time with this one when we finally do the porting and whatnot. I think I might do stock ports outside of just cleaned up and spacer first to so see what you could do with that and then we'll do the port work on it to you know see what we can get out of it that way but once i do the port work i can't really put a spacer on it because it you know changes everything so there's just no point okay we're just doing a couple tests to see how it is she's that curb right up there you'll hear the engine pick up she's going to hit the gas right there come along this edge here miss this and she's going to call it Right there. This is a stop line. Yep. Good, good, good. This whole big line. I'm gonna stand here so you know. Oh, okay. So we're gonna get some work done to it. Not right away, but uh, this is the goal I have before it gets too cold. So we can get back out here, do another couple tests on this. This is a perfect spot to do testing. It's consistent, it's paved, it's no one around. So it's a nice little area to do it at. So, all right, guys, as always, thanks for watching. And uh, if you could, smash the like, hit the subscribe, and the bell. Um, most important to me, drop a comment. I appreciate that a lot, lot. And uh, I also appreciate continuing the comments over on Johnny's Motorized Bicycles Facebook group. And for everything that I have and address, if you care, you ever wanted to send me something, all the links for everything is in the description. As always... Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.